Okay, so it says here, draw your box. The height of the box should be one more than the degree of the first polynomial. The length of the box should be one more than the degree of the second polynomial. That sounds confusing, but I'm going to have you guys multiplying negative 2x squared times x squared plus 3x plus 4. Please write that polynomial on your paper. When I think about making my box for this, I'm going to make it a single unit wide and I'm going to make it three down because we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the top and we're going to take these three terms and we're going to write them down here. We're basically making a times table for our polynomials. So if you think about a times table when you were little kids and you dragged your fingers from the sides to the box where the answer was, that's really what we're doing here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I multiply negative 2x squared times x squared, the exponent changes. It doesn't change when we're adding and subtracting them, like terms are like terms, but when we're multiplying exponents, they do change. And this becomes negative 2x to the fourth power. And I need you to trust me that that's true. We will be doing an exploration of why in the next week or so. I think it'll be right after spring break, okay? Then when we multiply negative two times positive three, this becomes negative six. What do you think happens to the x when I do x times x squared? Yep, x to the third power or x cubed. I've got negative 2x squared times positive 4. This becomes negative 8x squared. So the answer to this, we pull it out of the box and we re rewrite it as a trinomial. It is negative 2x to the fourth minus 6x to the third minus 8x squared. And I realize I did not continue to read the directions as we went, but we did these things. So we drew our box. We wrote the polynomials that we were multiplying on the outside edges of the box. We multiplied to get each box's value. Like terms can be found in the diagonals. We'll do that as we go into this, um, this note foldable, and we'll combine them. And then we want to write our answer in standard form, which is what we did down here. So I'd like us to now open this up. The boxes are made for us. We are gonna start with 4x minus three times 2x plus seven. It doesn't really matter, but I like to write the first one on the top and each term goes above a box, keeping the sign with it. And I like to write the second one down the side. I'm looking at the right side and the person who made this does it the opposite, but that's okay. And then we're gonna multiply. Four times two is eight. X times X is X squared. What's gonna go in this box? Four times seven, 28 X. This box will be negative six X. And this box will be negative 21. Now, on the directions on the outside when it said combine like terms, like terms can be found on the diagonals. Do you see where the like terms are here? 28x and negative 6x are like terms. When I combine them, what do they turn into? When I find like terms in the diagonal, I do circle them and on the outside of the circle, I write what I got because now I'm gonna take this term and this term and this term and they are my answer. So my answer is 8x squared plus 22x 
minus 21. Your parents learned this as the FOIL method. I did too. Uh, so to honor the fact that if you go home and tell your parents what you're working on, tell them that you're learning the FOIL method and they'll know what you're talking about. If they went to school in the United States. I'm not sure how they teach it outside the United States. But let's do the same problem back here. 4x minus 3 times 2x plus 7. And I'm going to show you how we learned this. Okay. And hopefully you'll see why I like doing it the new way better. <laughs> yes. This is called FOIL because it stands for first outer inner last. And basically we're saying that this gets multiplied by this and it gets multiplied by this and this gets multiplied by this and this also gets multiplied by this. Do you see how confusing that looks? We will start doing this with trinomials and it gets really messy. Yeah. Yeah, I did do that. <laughs> so here is our first term. 4x times 2x is going to give us 8x squared. I also, as a struggling algebra student, would forget the x squared part of this because I was following so many arrows trying to make sure I was keeping track of everything. <laughs> And then 4x times 7 gives me 28x. Negative 3 times 2x gives me negative 6x. And negative 3 times 7 gives me negative 21. Are we getting the same numbers that showed up in our boxes? Can you see how this could get lost though? And now I need to combine my like terms, which are here. And I get 8x squared plus 22x minus 21. And there's my answer. I like the matrix because it's just neater. And you don't lose negatives and you don't lose track of your exponents. It's just easier to make sure you get things right. So there's the history. We will later glue that into your notebook because you don't need to remember it. Your high school teachers might still call it that, though. Just FYI when you get to Algebra 2. OK. I am going to let you guys practice these three on your own. But I want us to do this one together and one of the ones with a trinomial together before I stop. And I'm also going to give you some book problems to do. So if this is 2x minus 1 squared, it could be rewritten as 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. Because 2x minus 1 squared means I'm doing the same thing twice. That means for this parentheses, I'm not parentheses, this matrix, I get 2x minus 1 on both the top and the side. What are we going to get when we multiply 2x times 2x? This is 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. And what do I get up here? Negative 2x. And down here? one. Here's my like terms. They do not cancel each other out. Negative 2 t plus negative 2 is negative 4x. So this equals 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Who's feeling pretty good about multiplying I like it better than adding and subtracting them. I really do. Let's do one of these with a trinomial in it, and then I'll just let you guys do some practice, OK? Down here, this one is written. The box is created the opposite of how I would have. I downloaded this from a algebra teacher in, um, where does she teach? Oklahoma. I would have done it the other way. So it doesn't really matter. We could do x squared. 3x minus 5 down the side, and 2x up here, and minus 8. Or we could have made it longer and done it like this. It will turn out the same either way, I promise. So two, x squared times 2x, the 2 stays the same. What happens to the x? x to the third. Yep. 
2x times 3x gives us 6x squared. 2x times negative 5, negative 10x. Negative 8 times x squared, negative 8x squared, yep. Negative 8 times positive 3x, negative 24x. And then finally, negative 8 times negative 5, positive 40. Okay, I'm going to highlight here, we have like terms diagonally. It's one of the things that I really like about this method, that they show up where we can easily identify them and combine them before we rewrite this as our answer. So I've got 6x squared and negative 8x squared. When I combine those, I get negative 2x squared. And then I've got negative 10x and negative 24x gives me negative 34x. So I'm going to take this term here as my first 2x to the third. It's another thing I really like about it. That top left corner is almost always going to have your leading term. And then I get negative 2x squared. That doesn't look like a negative because I just messed that up. Let me rewrite that meter. Negative 34x plus 40. So when I multiply a binomial times a trinomial, I ended up with four terms. Okay? So I would start off, finish practicing the five inside of here that are not finished. We do have some time for gluing, and I'll show you in a moment where I want you to put them in your notebook. But I would like you to do some practice problems from inside of our book. Multiplying polynomials is so important. I'm going to give you guys a nice amount of practice. It's going to be on page 273. I will expect this to be completed at the beginning of class tomorrow. We are going to do numbers 18 to 21. Those are, I'll show you under the camera. They are all a monomial or a single times three. So you're going to set it up like that first one we set up on the binder paper, okay? And then I want you to also do 24 through 30, okay?